to another edition of Wings Weekly. Jake Langenecht here and, of course, head coach Steve Jennings joining me once again. Coach, uh, a, a tough weekend here at the ODI Center, a pair of losses, but, you know, there's some positives that can certainly be taken away, too. Uh, one of them, I would say, anyway, was that uh, top team in the, in the division, and you guys played with them. It wasn't like they were any out of the barn by any means, and I think it, it kind of uh, was a litmus test in, in some senses and kind of a, a way, um, you know, for fans, for the team, for everybody to get a feel that, okay, this is this is the number one team, and we're in these games, you know. Yeah. So I thought that was a, certainly a positive. But uh, a 3-1 to one loss on Friday, um, OC was able to, to score the lone goal with his parents here, so that was kind of cool. Nice. <laughs> um, and then, of course, the power play 0 of 7. The PK went 5 of 7, a pretty physical matchup. What did uh, you and Steps think of Friday night's matchup? You know, I, I think we got pretty much what we thought we were going to get. We got a couple bad bounces on those on the power play goals, but that's Talk. why you don't yeah. want why you don't want to be in the box, right? Like those sort of things happen. And um, you know, I, I, I thought you know the team answered as well as we wanted and needed them to. I think you know productivity on the, on the power play has to get better. Um, you know, that hurt us that night that we weren't able to capitalize on one or two opportunities. They had the same number and they capitalized twice. And, you know, we just have to get better with that. We will. Moving on to Saturday, a 4-2 loss uh, again on Saturday, but a pretty close matchup. You had the lead uh, at different times in that game. Then, uh, you know, a tie game throughout a, a good a good chunk of it. And, and uh, Landry Schmuck able to get the wings on the board once again, family in the building. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Uh, power play goes 0 of 6. The PK was perfect, killing 4 of 4. Um, again, overall, a really close matchup and some pretty darn entertaining hockey. You know, uh, um, I think the crowd definitely and, and um, you know got their money's worth. That's for sure. What were your thoughts on Saturday's game? Yeah, I think similar to Friday, right? I, again, I think we you know we we saw some some improvement. I thought our power play, we didn't produce, but we actually generated momentum, which is if we're not going to produce, that's what we need to get. Um, it's good for the kill getting back back even there and, and closing the door, and then I I think you know again more confidence for the for the team showing that you know they should walk out of these last two weekends confident that they can play with anyone in the division. Even go back to the St. Cloud series when they were here, right after the showcase, same same sort of thing. So I think you know at this point we we after this weekend we will have sampled everyone in the division, and I think I think at this point you know we're we're gaining the momentum we need to gain. We just need to find the, the clicking of the productivity here. Where are you seeing the most um, improvement, and where do you feel like it need, where it needs to improve more? I mean, as a staff, if you're looking at things, going, okay, well, we've come a long ways here, but now we, we need to start, the, you know, get the ball rolling in, in this this component. Is there are there some areas that you can? Pitch well, I, th I mean, I think obviously that the the power play's got to get better, right? Um, when, when you look at it and really start to to dive down, right? We we have one of the fewest power play opportunities in the entire league, where where I think in the bottom five. So, you know, I think I think where we've been able to generate more opportunities lately, that's come from us working harder and it's come from us pushing the pace of the game. So, I think that's been good. I think we've been been you know building that confidence where we feel like okay, we can we can actually just set the pace and not chase the game. So I I feel like in the Following the showcase, we chased games for a couple of weeks. Um, I think the last couple of weekends we haven't really been chasing as much. So that's been a good improvement for us. And mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, and and I think it's for some of our younger players and our kids who haven't maybe played junior hockey before, getting the confidence that they can play. And you know, you see OC make that play this weekend or Schmuck make that play. I mean, those are two two young kids here in their first year of junior hockey. So it's nice to see them stepping up. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, you talked about uh, you know the power play opportunities. There were 24 penalties combined you know, Friday and Saturday night for both teams. Um, is that a product of discipline or, like you mentioned, is it is you know just a the little extra effort that is coming from um, forcing some some power play opportunities? I was surprised though, to, you know, for both teams to have 24 penalties overall. That's a lot. Yeah, I don't I don't think it was a discipline thing because you didn't look. It didn't get. Um, crazy out there by any stretch of the imagination, right? And I think part of the early season is everyone getting getting their feet under them, and um, you know, and, and learning how the how the league operates and how sure. we actually run and what what a North American Hockey League game looks like and feels like. Right. Okay. Um, sixteen hundred plus people in the in the building both nights. Uh, over sixteen hundred both nights. That is. Um, 
great crowd. What, is, what does that mean to you guys? I mean, on the bench and so on, to have that electricity and have the, that crowd cheering you guys on like that? Because I don't think we actually busted the barn or broke the record on Friday night, but it was pretty darn close. There were a lot of people here. Um, and, and then again, a great crowd on Saturday night. And I just rem you know, remember looking down at different times and, and you know, you, when, when somebody's offside or something that you could actually hear them yell off or, you know, and it's just like, they're really invested. They're really, you know, giving their heart and soul to it. Does that add a little something to you guys? I think it does, yeah, for sure. And, and, and you know, the, the challenge when you have a, a crowd like that is to never let the crowd get quiet. Yeah. Right? That when, when, that, when that crowd gets quiet, then we're in trouble. It's a big, big crowd of people at church, basically, mm -hmm. right? So we, our challenge, basically, is to continue to give them the, the, the reason to cheer and want to get involved in the game. And, and, and our answer is when they give it to us to feed back off of it and kind of continue to build on that so yeah and you know if there was a time during the weekend I would say it was maybe during the you know midway to late during the third where there got to be quite a few penalties and it seemed like things just kind of slowed down where the crowd did seem like it may be a little disconnected but you know it didn't take long and they're right back in it that's a passionate group and uh, yeah. I know and you know, talking to the players and so on too that they you know definitely feed off of that too um, Right now, Austin is at the top of the Central Division, as we talked about. They have 22 points. Then the North Iowa Bulls with 18. Minot now, after splitting with St. Cloud on the weekend, they've got 15 in third place. St. Cloud with 14 points in fourth. Because of the uh, win percentage, Wings in uh, right now with 14 points as well. But again, because of the win percentage, the uh, tiebreaker would go to St. Cloud right now. Bismarck at the bottom of the division with seven points. You head up... Um, to take on Minot, a 7-8, 1-0 team uh, for a Thursday-Saturday game or games. A um, couple things. One, what have you seen of Minot? What do you know of this team? Also, does the Thursday-Saturday thing, uh, it's got to create some difficulty when it comes to preparing for a, for a team and getting the team ready. I mean, even just logistically, I would imagine, but yeah. you know, even from an emotional standpoint and so on, it's, it's a little different. How, do, what is the, how does that work? I don't know. We'll tell you after the weekend. How about that? I mean, I, I, I certainly have, have some scheduling questions and who's driving the bus, but hey, it is what it is, and we just we, we're going to go to the go to the rink and play games. Yeah. Okay. Right? And and I think for us, our our challenge with the group is, you know, whether whether we go there by car, bus, or boat, right? We're just going to show up ready to play a hockey game and and you know take that opportunity for what it is. And all the other stuff is just nonsense. And right. we'll just we'll just work around the nonsense and the noise. Okay. And and Minot, what have you seen of them? Yeah, new new coach there, so you know, um, but not an inexperienced coach at all. So so like us, they're going through a bit of a change there, but they're building some good momentum there. I've seen them uh, the last couple weekends just in pre scouts with Austin, and then the work we're already doing here. So you know, it'll be. I think I I like the rivalry that we have. I think it's going to be a good hard weekend of hockey for us. So I'm excited about it. Excellent. All right, well, coach, that's about all I've got for you. Um, I appreciate you taking some time as always. And uh, best of luck against Mina. All right. Thanks, Jay. All right, folks, we'll be back with the second portion of Wings Weekly coming up after this. We raise the bar on bar food with sandwiches, tenders, and... Burgers. There's more where this <laughs> came from. To the greatest of all times. Wings Weekly continues, and as usual, a player is joining me, and this time it is defenseman extraordinaire Kevin McKay of Franklin, Massachusetts. Kevin, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. Uh, 45 games last year, six goals, 13 assists, and already three goals, three assists in 14 games this year. You're a veteran guy. Um, we're going to get to some of, uh, some of last year's stuff, I guess, in just a moment, but I wanted to start with your hockey journey you you know how did you how did you get started playing hockey was that at an early age were there some influences or how did you how did you get get going with the yeah, sport yeah so i started when i was like 4 years old my older brother played um we had a backyard rink just growing up so i just loved the game yeah. from that and ever since i just kept playing Backyard rinks, so it's, uh, yeah. it makes it a lot easier just to step outside and play or having a, a pond or someplace that you can do that on. That's awesome. Um, you know, as, as mentioned last year, obviously you're a big part of this of this team that uh, that accomplished a lot. What would you say are some of your hockey highlights in your career? Uh, hockey highlights, I mean, last year was definitely, I won't forget that. That season was amazing. Um, President's Cup, yeah, and definitely. The Central Division Championship, all that, yeah. yeah. Um, when I was a freshman, 
in high school. I won the Massachusetts State Championship. I won't forget that. That was amazing. So, yeah. A couple of, uh, of, of very notable moments for sure in the uh, hockey history of Kevin McKay. If you, uh, if you had... Um, how do I, I want to put this? If you could write your own ticket, so to speak, or whatever, and you know, go on to play D1 college you know, hockey somewhere, where would it be? What, what would be your dream school? Dream school? I mean, right now I'd play anywhere Division One, but it would be nice to go somewhere on the East Coast, definitely yeah. closer, closer to home. home yeah. yeah. Right on. Well, you know, as I mentioned, you got here, you know, mid, um, last year or whatever, you're playing, playing with the Wings. What were your first impressions of Aberdeen when you got here? I mean, you're coming from the East Coast. I always think it's interesting when guys, you know, they come from the, the Philadelphia area or Pittsburgh or whatever, you know, and, um, and, and show, into, show up to a town of 27,000 people in the middle of the, the mid, middle of the plains of South Dakota. What were your first impressions? Yeah, it was a little different to adjust, but I mean, I'm used to it. It's, it's been great to me so far, so, yeah. but yeah. Excellent. What um, would you have a a go to pull if you're if you're pulling up a playlist? And I want to say before a game, but eh, we won't worry about that. Say say you're driving, whatever. What what are going to be the top three songs on your playlist? Three songs? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, I listen to a lot of rap music, so I can't name a song, but I like I'll name an artist, A Boogie. Okay. I like him. Pop Smoke. I like him. Walk a flock of flame. I like him. So it's a lot of rap. A lot of rap. All right. Yeah. Um, what uh, do you have? Any other hobbies or interests? Of, you know, outside of the rink or away from hockey? Yeah, I mean, usually when I'm home for the summer, I like to go to the beach. I like to kayak and paddleboard in the ocean. Very cool. Yeah. The ocean is a is a terrifying place to be. I don't know yeah. what just, you hear these stories about. You know, sharks and all the different stuff that's down there. And I I don't know that I would be. I would be very comfortable. But then again, I didn't grow up around yeah. it either, so I suppose it makes a bit of a difference. Do you follow sports at all? Do you follow the World Series, for example, or have uh, a favorite? No. no. I mean, I like the Red Sox, but they lost, so yeah. stop following it. Yeah, so once, once your, your horse yeah. is out of the race, you're done. I'm with you on that. Uh, if you could snap your fingers and be anywhere in the world, if you could just instantly be transported someplace, where would you go? Hawaii, on yeah. the beach. Definitely. I always wanted to go to Hawaii. Maybe one day. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Hawaii, a destination for a, a, a fantasy destination for a lot of people, that's for sure. Um, let's, uh, let's say, let's look forward, I guess. We've got a week coming up here where it's uh, a Thursday, Saturday game uh, against Minot. Um, I know you guys, as a team, probably haven't really had a chance to start working on um, uh, preparing for Minot, but you as a veteran, you know, you've been up to the Mason stuff and you, you know, there's some veterans on that, on that Minot team. Um, and I'm not asking for a scout on Minot necessarily, but what do you guys as a team, what do you feel like you need to do uh, against the, the Minotauros to come away with some wins? I mean, usually they're, they like to hit, they like to pack it in. So I think we just gotta use our speed and I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Thursday, Saturday, kind of a, a different, a different looking road trip than what we're used to. But speaking of road trips, what are what are your absolute necessities on a road trip? What do you have to have with? My headphones and a charger, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Battery pack with charger. Always. For sure. There's uh, certain things that you gotta can't live without, and have, not having a charger for a phone or something to that yeah. effect is is uh, oh, that would be. I can't imagine. That would make a, for a long bus ride. Uh, all right, if you had one food, and I've asked this of other guys before and it's always a little bit different, but if you had one food that you, actually I don't want to say could eat, almost had to eat, like you could eat nothing else for an entire year but one single type of food, what would it be? Uh, eggs. Eggs? Yeah, egg sandwich. There you Definitely. go. Hey, I Definitely. like that. All right. All right, well, Kevin, I tell you what, I don't have a whole heck of a lot more for you. I just, I know I wanted to, to talk to you a little bit about, you know, how you got started in hockey and like you mentioned, you know, an early age and uh, some of your inspirations and so on. And of course, touching on those hockey highlights that uh, were 
came from a pretty darn successful year last year. Um, your wings are on the road this weekend in Minot. Take to the ice first on Thursday, November 4th for a 7.05 puck drop and then have a day off Friday before returning to action on Saturday for a 4.05 puck drop. Watch the games at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Aberdeen or HockeyTV.com. Listen on 94.1 The Rock, HubCityRadio.com or The Rock app. We'll be back at the Odie as we host the Bismarck Bobcats on Saturday, November 13th for our military appreciation game. Get your tickets now at TicketsAberdeenWings.com. Season tickets and corporate night sponsorships are available for the 2021-2022 season. Call Aaron at 605-380-5852 for more information. And don't forget, Wings Weekly is now a podcast. Find the audio for this season's episode on Spotify, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. And for all the latest news and information on the Wings, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Once again, Kevin McKay of Franklin, Massachusetts, thanks so much for taking some time and uh, coming on the show with us. Oh, thank you for having me. You bet. All right, folks, that'll wrap up this, week, uh, this week's Wings Weekly.